This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. That is Anthony Chang. How you doing? Doing good, Big O. How are you? Very good. You grew up in this town, correct? Yeah, Miami, Kendall. Kendall. So are yeah. you are, are you um are are you one of those media members that says, "Oh no, I can't root for a team," or "I'm not a fan of a team," or are you like me? I'm I'm a media member, but I admit I'm a fan of all the teams and I want them all to win. But I'm going to say if they're not doing some right, I mean, I I think my track record's pretty obvious that if yeah. you're not doing some right, I'm going to say, you're "Hey man, I I love the Heat, but I don't think they did this right. I love the Dolphins." I don't think they, I love the Panthers, but I don't think they did this right. Hell, what was I saying about the Panthers? They had two Robins. They need to go get a Batman. Right, they did that. They went and got their Batman. They they obviously thought the same thing I did, right? I mean, when I said, hey, you got to fire Dale Talon, no one in town had the balls to say you got to fire Dale Talon. But eventually, they fired Dale Talon because it's what it is. You know what I mean? I, I right. love my team. So what, what kind of a media member are you do? Can you compartmentalize? Can you say you are a fan, but you can cover it objectively? Um, I've kind of had my fanhood beaten out of me by the journalism gods, unfortunately. <sighs> in, in journalism school, it's one of the biggest things we learn. And like, I, you know, obviously it's still in. It's I, I was I grew up down here, right? So I want to see the teams do well. I, I can't deny that, but I'm not the same type of fan I was 10, 15 years ago, unfortunately. Right, right. Okay. All right. I got you. Uh, for me, I, I, uh, I do both, man. I, yeah. I, I, mi I, I miss it. Honestly, I miss I, it. Yeah. I'm open. I'm open about both. I will root for my teams, all my local teams, but I, but again, I have to do my job. Right. And my, and my job is to be objective and, and call it how I see. It doesn't mean it's right because obviously it doesn't mean I see everything the right way. That's bullshit. Sure. I mean, obviously I'm, I'm a human being, so I'm going to have a lot of faults and I'm going to make a lot of mistakes, but um, yeah, for me, it's, um, yeah, I have no problem with that. I, I, uh, I always trip out with the people that no, I, I can't root for the team. I can't, you know, come on. <laughs> yeah. I get the people that come from out of town and yeah, you know, they have no ties. Right. Yeah. They have right. no ties. I, I, I totally understand that. I believe those people, you know what I mean? But if you're born yeah. here and like you're raised watching those sports, how do you, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. You yeah. know, do you know how much, you know how much like gear and clothes I have of the heat and the hurricanes and the dolphins that I just don't wear <laughs> because you know, it's just, but it is, it is, it is weird like that. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. So, uh, it has gone just absolutely quiet now, dude. I mean, sure. there yeah. isn't a peep out there. So uh, what what are we waiting for? What blink are we waiting for? What what what's the what's the thing that's going to turn this over and and get this moving? Because I got to feel that if you know with this whole Celtic thing, I don't know how Miami can compete with the Celtics and what they could offer. So if you're Miami, doesn't it behoove you to start moving on to Plan B and C now? But we don't see any kind of movement in that direction. Uh, it seems like the whole world is waiting on Durant, and this has kind of put the the brakes on everything, man. Nothing is going on in the NBA. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a big game of chicken, honestly. I think Brooklyn is asking, like we've talked about, for a lot, and teams are saying, okay, well, if you want that much, we're, we're not going to give you that for a guy who's going to turn 34 in a, a couple months and is coming off a serious Achilles injury. Let's see if you really take them into camp or that you or the asking price gets lowered a little bit once the season gets closer. So I think, you know, we're right now we're seeing which side, you know, they're waiting to see which side is going to blink first. And that might decide what's going to happen here. But yeah, I think the Heat at this point, are they still alive in the Durant game? Sure, because Durant hasn't been traded anywhere. Right. And they're right, one of the yeah. teams he wants to go to. But realistically, how much of a chance do they have to get him when they're not including Bam out of bio in a trade? Probably little. Right. So I think the Heat at this point, I'm just talking to people, they're prepared to move forward with this roster, at least to open the season. Um, this might this is probably going to be the roster to open the season. I don't think they're gonna make a trade for another guy, like a plan B, because like we've said, they need those first round picks, they need Duncan's salary, 
to get, to get, you know, pull off this type of trade. And we don't know who's going to become available in three, four months, five months. And they don't want to five months on the road say, why did we trade for Miles right. Turner? And all of a sudden, Damian Lillard's available once time to the heat, but we don't have the pieces to do it. That would, you know, they'd obviously regret that. So I think they're going to, this, unless something changes here and Kevin Durant pulls the ultimate power play and says, I want to go to the heat. And that's the only team I want to go to. This is probably going to be the roster to open the season. And everything you said there makes actual total sense as I'm thinking about it because you make the John Collins move, you make the Miles Turner move, you make the Harrison Barnes move. Are you a championship caliber team? Probably not. They're a little better. They're a little better, obviously. They're a little they're better. The you're a little better, anything. but yeah. you're yeah. yeah, you're gonna need all kinds of breaks and things to happen sure. for you to get to the finals and then beat Golden State or whoever else is going to be there in the Western Conference. So that why make that move and and take yourself out of the Durant sweepstakes? Because if you make the Durant move, you have a shot at winning a title. Yeah. And that's the difference there. And just leave yourself. I, I get it. I get it. I totally understand it. Uh, because by chance, if it's a, it, you're able to pull it off, even though I feel that the Celtics, as long as he wants, as long as he's willing to play there, I don't know how Miami can beat the Celtics in any offer, quite frankly. I just don't. I think if they include Bam, they could. We've, we talked about this right, a couple but, of days ago, but, but they're not, inclu they're not right. including Bam. Right, that's what I'm saying. Bam. So if you're not including Bam, there's no way. Oh, not, yeah. not only that, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know what I've said? Not only if you're not including Bam, but you must take Simmons. Right. The yeah. other teams will not have to take Simmons. Miami will have to take Simmons if they, if they, if they make this Durant. Right. Mark my words on this, okay? Mark my words on this. That will be the difference maker in Miami's deal to Boston or Phoenix or Toronto or I don't know any other wild team that may come into right. it. That will be the deal breaker. They say, no, no, we'll take Simmons from you as we're, or as we're giving Bam. And yeah. then all of a sudden now that really makes a difference for them because you, you, uh, you got Durant, but you unloaded the headache from them on, on Simmons. Yeah. And, and as of now, look, things change, right? We've seen it. But as of now... Bam is not in part of any offer, and the expectation is that's not going to change. You know, obviously it could be negotiations, and who knows what happens in two months, three months. But as of right now, I, I'd be pretty surprised if Bam was was traded. They, I, I, it doesn't seem like that's in the in the cards right now. No, I'm, I'm I'm with you there. Um, all right. So then, if they're going with this roster, mm -hmm. oh, the power forward position is kind of thin. Yeah, <laughs> to say the least. Um, you Holy know, moly, Caleb, dude. I mean, yeah. you, you can't, can't, isn't there a, a, a minimum veteran out there? Don't they have those exemptions? Can't they use like half of one of those exemptions or something like that? The problem is the expectation is Udonis is going to come back. So that's 14 players. That will put them within $200,000 of the luxury tax. Okay. If they sign a 15th player, they're in the tax. Which again, it's not a big tax, but it's not about the money. It's about do you want to start the clock on a repeater tax for a minimum guy that's going to put you over the tax for, you know, above only about a million dollars? It could be right above the tax. It's not worth it. So I don't expect the Heat to sign a 15 player until later in the season where it's prorated enough where they could sign the guy and still sit, stay below the tax. Maybe that's when they do it, like in February, March, something like that. But I don't see that happening in the next few weeks because they, they're not going to want to go into the tax for a journey, you know, a journeyman guy just for depth on the roster. Anthony, is that right that we've all been programmed this way about this whole tax thing with Mickey Harrison, who's a who's a filthy rich yeah. millionaire? And it's, and it's yeah, you know, it, you say, well, you know, is it worth it? Whatever, dude. Yeah, it's worth for him. He's got more money than God. What the hell is it to him? A couple extra million dollars. It's it's I would say it's not it's less about the money right now because the bill again wouldn't be much. But if you're if you're well, repeat, a repeater if you, repeater tax, so what dude? No, that that is that 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 really that's limiting for roster building. That will cripple an organization. It is that punitive. Um so you want to keep that you don't want to set their clock as at all unless you really have a 
championship team and you're making the, I mean, obviously if they get Durant, right. And what's the, excuse they don't care for, about going to the luxury. What's time, the excuse but, for golden state, dude. Well, golden state's gonna have some tough decisions to make here with Draymond and green. And they've been making those tough decisions. They'll continue to make them and they'll continue to pay people. They wow. continue to, they, they paid a luxury tax this year. That was large. Yeah, they did. Huge, it? huge luxury tax. Yeah. I mean, this is what you're competing with. You're competing with right. the billionaires that are willing to pay taxes. I mean, if you're in baseball and you want to be, you want you want to compete with the Cubs, the Boston Red Sox, the Yankees, and the Dodgers, Bubba, you better pay taxes. Yeah, uh, you, you know what I'm saying. I, uh, I know what you're saying. But I, I, I mean, love what I love what it, Mickey Arison is all about. Yeah. The Arison family has been absolutely fantastic, but they have programmed us way too much about this tax stuff. Yeah, no, and I, for, for, for a, I get it. If you were a broke type of uh, family that, uh, you know, if you're a, uh, um, got a Mike Brown for the Bengals, if you're a, trying to think of what, what's a non-rich family, do they have one in the NBA that's that's been there in a long time? That's really kind of not really a spending. Well, maybe a small market team. Yeah, I guess. Small market. Well, Sarver, Sarver doesn't like to spend, right? Well, he's a cheapo, okay? Yeah, but yeah. he has the money. No, he has, right. I'm saying doesn't like to spend, yeah. Yeah, he's a cheapo, but he has the money. I'm talking about there are some ownership groups that just don't have the money. Sure. Sure. You know what I mean? And uh, like the people that own the Chargers, they're not, they, they can't compete with Steven Ross. They don't have that kind of money. Mike Brown will not be able to do what the Browns owner did and put $250 million in escrow for his quarterback. He won't have that. He will have to take out a loan. Whereas Lerner from the Browns, he just wipes it out of his pocket. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so that I just, I, 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 would, I just kind of feel that the every time all of you guys write and talk about it, this tax thing is brought up and I'm a little bothered by it because when you're filthy rich, you know, I need you to treat this like a hobby. That's what yeah. I want you to do, bro. You know, I, I would just, as fans, we don't want to like to hear it, right? No. But you have to find a middle ground because to pay $100 million in tax, like a tax bill like that, like Golden State's doing. And I mean, yeah, would it be great it sure, as a fan? But that's that's a lot. That's a lot yeah. of money. That's, yeah. I mean, you have to think about it's also way, that's, as well. Miami's yeah. never paid anything like that. No, never, never. Ever. But that's that's the risk you take by going to the Peter tax. I you get could it. get you could get a hundred million dollar tax bill, and that yeah. But you don't have to get could, that's a hundred million. But I'm talking about if it's a couple million, if it's five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Come on, dude. Yeah, no. But if it's a repeater tax, you're gonna you're talking about north of fifty million dollars at least. It's oh, really do you have a shot at winning a title? I mean, that's kind of the idea. Yeah, uh, I think if I think are, if you, they, are you only thinking of money, or are you just thinking? Are right. you thinking of winning a title? What kind of a billionaire owner are you? Are you just thinking about the bottom line before the winning? I yeah. kind of like the I kind of like the owner or the family that's thinking about the winning before the bottom line because the bottom line is not really that important. Winning sure. is. The, I mean, and the and the Heat has proven they'll go into the tax if it's a title team. But to add a 15th guy like I don't know, let's say hypothetically Markeith Morris, that's not making a title team. Oh, so I know that. A luxury tax for that. That's what I'm saying. Like for this time, Collins just not or a Miles Turner, why not? Or Harrison Barnes, it's a good player that yeah. you're at. Right. And but we just talked about it, right? That's not making them no that's not making them a tax contender either. And that's but, a trade. It, they could they could it, find a way to get under the tax, you know. So the, the only like reason that. to go to a tax is if you have a championship caliber team, not if you can get better and maybe challenge and you know, no? Yeah. That's I, I mean that's a little disappointing. That that I, I have to admit that the 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 talk of money is too much from the Miami Heat. Just too much from a family that wealthy. That's the thing. I just, you know, there's a, just a part of me that that part just kind of bugs me a little bit because if I'm that wealthy, I probably would be more interested in winning than the profits. But I guess that's why he's a billionaire and I'm not. Yeah, and, and well, and also, again, it's just they've had a track record of success, right? Yeah, they've been in the tax before. Sometimes you have to make business decisions and what's worth it or what's not. You can't go into the tax every year, and obviously, and you have to make. They rarely go. Sense. Sense. They, they rarely. Were, the last they time they were in the tax was 
right. the bubble year when they made the finals, which was right. what 2021. I think, and what did they pay? And what did they oh, pay? Little. It wasn't much. It wasn't much. It's my point. They rarely yeah. pay taxes, dude. And right. For all the wah, 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 crying about taxes, you barely ever pay taxes, yeah. dude. Big wow. three years, they were in the tax. A good amount, obviously, with those three. And that was obviously worth it, right? Um, I, ha I, but... I, have a, I have a joke I could use for this right now. What? Yeah, he's used to doing it with his ships, so he's kind of doing it with his basketball team. All right, there you go. All right, what are you working on in the Miami Herald so folks can check you out? Um, today I have a mailbag up just a answering readers' questions. One of them is on Tyler Hero's extension. Uh, someone asking, well, if the Heat are running it back, why aren't they? Why haven't they signed Tyler Hero to an extension yet? Um, which is funny because yeah, uh, like maybe, is maybe they don't want to pay the tax. <laughs> well, signing to an extension will limit them immediately. And the truth, they, they'll basically take him out of the Durant game. So oh, what's the point of that? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. We're in the tax threshold. My God. Yeah. I don't pay any taxes. And Saturday, I'll have something from Bam Adebayo's youth camp in Kendall. Um, so stay tuned for that. There you go. Follow him on Twitter at Anthony underscore Chang. Download the app, iOS or Android. It is Miami's liquor store. Liquor split, baby. And remember... Your first order, we're going to give you 15% off. Use the code Big O15 Liquor Split. Mr. Chang, thank you, sir. Have a fantastic weekend and stay away from taxes. Yeah, don't forget to fire your taxes, Big O. You got it. Right. <laughs> See you. <laughs> That's the Liquor Split Miami Heat Report.